Mr. Kazmark, can call the meeting to order, please. Thank you, Council President. On roll call tonight, Council Member Catamania is absent as he is out of the country on vacation. Council Members Conboy? Here. McLaughlin? Here. Trewinski? Here. Boncino? Here. Council President Castiglia? Here. Mayor Mola is also out of the country on vacation tonight. We have a quorum. Okay, please stand for our uh, prayer and flag salute. O oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless our meeting, which we entrust to your fatherly care and protection. Please remove all selfishness and pre prejudice from our hearts and implant therein a keen sense of justice and a greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in our deliberations so that our decisions will always please you and bring peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Statement of compliance? Yes, sir. Whereas Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of New Jersey requires at the commencement of each meeting a statement of compliance be read by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised that the meeting requirements for this meeting have been met and posted, posting an annual meeting notice to the record of Hackensack and the Herald News of Woodland Park. And by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk, as well as in a public place within the municipal building, and by notifying interested citizens. Said notice has been posted on, ju on January 1st, 2009. All right, tonight we're going to uh, adopt the 2009 municipal budget, Mr. Tasman. Yes, Council President. We have two resolutions this evening pertaining to the adoption of the 2009 municipal budget. Resolution 259 is an amendment to the 09 municipal budget. Resolution 26009 is the adoption of the 2009 municipal budget. Uh, with your permission, Council President, I'll read Resolution 259-09 into the, into the record. If the Council has any questions, uh, once a motion and second are had, then we'll turn it over to Mr. Rigatano in case there's any questions or comments. Okay. Resolution 259-09, Resolution to amend the 2009 municipal budget. Whereas the local municipal budget for the year 2009 was approved on the 19th day of March 2009, and whereas the public hearing on said budget has been, has been advertised, and whereas it is desired to amend said approved budget. Now therefore be it resolved by the governing body of the Borough of Elmwood Park, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that the following amendments to the approved budget of the 2009 budget be made as listed. Be it further resolved that two certified copies of this resolution be filed forthwith with the Office of the Director of the Division of Local Government Services for certification of the 2009 local municipal budget so amended. It is hereby certified that this is a true copy of the resolution amending the budget approved by the Borough Council on this 20th day of August 2009. Council President will need a motion and a second. Tom, uh, well, we, well, we got any discussion from Roy? You have anything to say? Uh, this is just the amendment. The amendment is to bring in some of the grants since January to today that we were able to secure. Uh, some of those uh, grants include uh, some of the space, open space, uh, some of the police grants, uh, the, DARE pro uh, the DARE program, um, and clean communities. Any discussion from the council? Uh, yes, uh, Council President, if I may. Um, I also would like to let the residents know that are in attendance tonight and those who will catch us on TV, that uh, this council, as I'm served as your finance chairman, we have worked uh, extremely hard on this budget. Uh, we all know what extreme times we're, th we're going through. Uh, it's affecting all of our families, our homes, and so forth. But um, um, we have made many attempts in, in working with our department heads try to trim anything we possibly could with this budget. Uh, and uh, we've had to make some difficult decisions. We'll continue, this is, this is always a work in progress. It never stops. Um, uh, I continuously speak with our town CFO, the rest of the members on the finance committee and the, and the council of work meetings 
to discuss different avenues we can uh, uh, approach uh, uh, in this budget. Um, but it also comes with some uh, frustrations too. As a councilman, as a taxpayer, as a resident, and a member of, of this uh, council, because <clears throat> time and time again, our borough continues to get ignored at the higher levels. Um, we continue every year to apply for extraordinary aid. I think once in the last 10 years, we actually got extraordinary aid. Um, we are a borough that works extremely hard. The mayor puts a, a, a tremendous amount of pressure on us to, to do that, to assure that to the residents. We all work here to make sure that happens. And when we're a, bud, when we're a borough that's fiscally responsible and not being foolish with the taxpayers' money, making correct decisions, we get no reward for that. Um, we have a police department that works extremely hard in trying to keep crime down and keep our residents safe. When you take into consideration of our surrounding towns, that uh, of the uh, of what kind of traffic comes through Elmwood Park, and uh, I'll wrap it up here. But it's very frustrating uh, on all those levels, uh, and the, the council knows this. We've discussed it. We got no extraordinary aid. We got turned down on our COPS grant that we should have definitely gotten something for. Councilman McLaughlin worked very hard on that, pushed that, championed it, worked with the council on it, and we got nothing. So I'm of the opinion, and I'll discuss this at our next work meeting, that we should just blow our budget and spend and spend and spend, and we should tell the cops, stop pulling everybody over, let crime run rampant, because it is upsetting when you pick up the paper, and I've been saving articles for some time now, of other municipalities that they all write, hey, if we didn't get extraordinary aid, uh, we would have had to lay people off. If we didn't get extraordinary aid, we would have got that. And sometimes it's always the same towns. 2.8 million went out in extraordinary aid. And something that the mayor has always said uh, for all the years is why don't they just take that money and divide it among all of us and give us something back to the residents. And we get nothing time and time again. Other municipalities can be foolish, not, not do the due diligence a few years back, Dumont practically went bankrupt because they weren't watching their budget, and I believe they got uh, uh, extraordinary aid in the amount of about $600,000, and then another bailout from the county, I think for another $700,000. Rutherford uh, Excuse me? Rutherford too. And Rutherford too. Uh, you know, so it's discouraging when you see all that happen, as Councilman Blocklin uh, can add to it. He knows, he's been up here, he knows himself, he sees it. So. It's, it's tough. We, again, to wrap it up here, we, we tried to be careful here with the budget. We, we, we're, we, uh, we were able to avoid the furloughs for, for our employees. And unfortunately, due to the economical turn in some of our departments, we've only had to have one layoff. So um, I want to thank everybody for their help and hard work on this. And thank you. Larry, can, can I say something, Larry? Sure. Uh, just to piggyback on that, uh, Senator Rothman was here over a week ago. Tom and I were here. We were able to get him, uh, speak to him on the outside as he was leaving, expressed our frustrations over the stimulus package, how our police were shortchanged on that. And the quote from his was that the towns that do good with their police force and the same as uh, in their finances don't get anything. So I said, what are you telling these towns? And we... Uh, we brought that to his attention twice, and uh, also to uh, Senator Gordon. So maybe we can get some help. Uh, hope we can get some help on the state level. Is where it's got to change because it is not going to change in the county or the local levels. Anybody else? I'm sorry if I may, Council President. One more last thing. I just want the residents to know uh, of the percentages how it breaks down. I should have mentioned this before. When the school budget failed, we did cut out $535,000 out of that budget. That's not an easy process either. But the residents spoke, we met with the Board of Ed, and we took out $535,000 out of that. Of this entire uh, budget, uh, of the $49 million that we need to raise, we're only about $15.6 million of that money is municipal. The rest of which is about 27%. The rest all goes to the Board of Ed and the uh, county for their, uh, for their open space and for the county tax. The rest of it is... So only 15.6 million is ours that we have to control to run this borough. The rest is all coming, uh, going elsewhere. So uh, thank you, uh, Council President. Anybody else? Call the roll. On roll call for resolution 25909, this is the amendment of the 2009 Amendments. municipal budget. 
Council Member Catamagna is absent. Council Members Conboy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trewinski? Yes. Loncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 260 09. <clears throat> this is on adoption of the 2009 municipal budget. Be it resolved by the governing body of the Borough of Allen Park, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that the, the budget herein before set forth is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation for the purposes stated in the sums therein set forth as appropriations and authorization in the above amount. $15,675,117 for municipal purposes. We need a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Councilman Trewinski and Councilman Vonsino. Any discussion? Any discussion? Uh, we just had the discussion on it, basically. Same thing. Uh, pull, the, pull the roll, please. On roll call for adoption of the 2009 <coughs> municipal budget. Council Member Catamagna is absent. Council Members Conboy? <coughs> yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trewinski? <coughs> yes. Vonsino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Let me clear this one thing up before the mayor uh, will never let me go. Uh, the cable television, I didn't mention it before, but I mention it now, or else he won't let me off the hook for it. Uh, channel 77, you can watch this, uh, you can watch this meeting on Channel 77. I think this is new, new days and times now. It's Wednesday at 3 p.m., Thursday at 1 p.m., and Friday at 11 a.m. Or the website is www.elmwoodparknj.us. Thank you, Mr. Kazmark. Thank you, Council President. Under minutes this evening, we have the executive session of July the 9th, 2009, special audit work meeting of July the 22nd, 2009, regular meeting of July 23rd, 2009, and the executive session meeting of August the 6th, 2009. Any motion? Yeah. Mr. Kazmark, just uh, the August 6th meeting, I was absent. Okay. okay. You could vote abstaining from that meeting? Uh, yeah. If we could take a roll call, I, I can do it that way. You too, too? July 9th, I was Councilman Trewinski, July 9th. I was, I was Abstention. We get a motion for all at once? Yes. <clears throat> okay, we get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Councilman Trewinski and Councilman Convoy. On roll call, Councilmember Catamagna is absent. Councilmember's Convoy? Yes. McLaughlin? I abstain from the last two meetings, please. The, the last meeting, public. 723. That was 23, yes. Okay. Chawinski? Uh, I abstained from the July 9th executive. I was on vacation at that time, but the other ones I'm fine with. That's a yes. Boncino? Yes, with the exception of August 6th, where I was sick. Got it. Abstained. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Do I get a star for good attendance? I was at yeah, me, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Under ordinances tonight on first reading, resolution 241-09, introduce ordinance 09-18 on first reading. You have resolved that an ordinance entitled a bond ordinance to authorize the improvement of Kip Avenue Section 2 in, by, and for the Borough of Elmwood Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $230,000 to pay the cost thereof and to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriations and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds be passed and adopted on first reading and be resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, September the 17th, 2009 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as the same can be heard, at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be and he is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper the notice of introduction and final hearing is required by law. Can we get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Councilman Trewinski, Councilman Convoy. Any discussion? Any discussion? Uh, Did you want to talk a little bit? Uh, on uh, sure. I would just like to mention so the residents know what we're doing here. Okay. Um, with this money that we're spending to uh, complete work on Kip Ave, this is part of the community develop, develop money grant money. We mm -hmm. put the money out and then we get reimbursed from community development monies. So this is not, uh, this money will get back to reimburse us for, for this road work, uh, which is uh, $230,000. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Conroy. 
Uh, can you call the roll, please? On roll call, <coughs> Councilmember Catamania is absent. Councilmembers Conboy? Yes. <coughs> McLaughlin? Yes. Yes. Trewinsky? <coughs> yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 242-09, introduce ordinance 09-15 on second reading. Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend the code of the borough of Elmwood Park Therefore, entitled Parks and Recreational Areas to add a new section prohibiting parking except by employees in a certain designated area. Whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, July 23, 2009, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend the code of the Borough of Elmwood Park, therefore entitled parks and recreational areas to add a new section prohibiting parking except by employees in certain designated area pass on final reading council president will need a, a <coughs> motion to open the hearing to the public okay motion to open the vote so second. second councilman Vonsino and councilman convoy all in favor all in aye. favor aye. aye aye so ordered aye. anybody from the public Any wishing to be heard anybody from the public want to be heard on this ordinance Okay. Estelle Vandello, 36 Franklin Street. Uh, the designated area doesn't have anything to do with the senior center or the rec center parking lots? I believe it has something to do with the rec center. It's the rec center. parking lot on the bigger, on, yes. the, lar <clears throat> yeah. on the larger size lot? Yes, it does, so that it will be restricted. I have a, a question. So if there are seniors from the senior center, who are going on a trip and they're getting the bus in the large parking lot, mm -hmm. that's where they park. Correct. If they can't park there and they park by the senior center side, that means no other seniors can get in to the nutrition center to eat. Well, there's, there's only a certain number of spaces that are marked. They have signs. Those are the spaces. It's not the whole parking lot. So there will be a, there's the still an area. Are up there now, I believe. Through, through, you, through you, Mr. Council President? Sure. Wait, no, wait. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. say Ren again. Ms. Rendello, the situation is this. Um, there are either three or four marked parking spaces right now that read employee only. Okay. It's for the four full-time employees that work down so at the recreation center. That's not a problem. Okay. So what's, what's happening here is right now those signs, while they're there, are unenforceable by the police department because there's no ordinance backing up the okay. restricted area for those employees to park. So what we're doing is we're now, That's by fine. adopting this ordinance, we're restricting the parking there to only employees and it'll make the give the police department the ability to enforce it and it's only those few spots that would be marked that way that's correct yeah. thank you Th yeah this is uh, this is not an additional spaces as the clerk just told you unfortunately now those spaces have been there for a long time yep. uh, so unfortunately we need to take this corrective action because um, oh, no, I there's I always one in every bunch it, who wants to challenge the spots so that's why we're taking this corrective okay. action Longest we hope we never have to take action but this but, way, they'll be efficient. But still, we're only talking about four no additional spots. Same spots that have been there. Okay. okay. Council President will need a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. So moved. Yes. Councilman Conboy, Councilman Foncino. On roll call, roll call. to adopt. Council members Catamania is absent. <clears throat> Conboy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trewinsky? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion to introduce passes. Resolution 243-09, introduce 09-16 on second reading. Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend the code of the borough of Elmwood Park, chapter 16, entitled property maintenance. And whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, July 23, 2009, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same, now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend the code of the Borough of Elmwood Park, Chapter 16, entitled, entitled Property Maintenance, pass on final reading. Okay. You need a motion to open it up, open uh, the meeting to the public. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody from the public want to comment on this uh, ordinance? Motion to close it. So moved. moved. Second. Can uh, Con we go discussion? Just to, just to tell the, uh, the people what this ordinance does. Somebody wants in the can. All right. You know, this, this ordinance was for our maintenance uh, inspector. We've been having problems. That, if you notice, a lot of 
A lot of houses have problems with the uh, foreclosures and that. The grass is overgrown and they're not being maintained. Our inspector goes out and issues a violation once or twice on the door, but he still has to give it to them certified or hand delivered to them. This is what will eliminate that problem, whereas a lot of other towns have been doing, or once he puts the notice on the door, they're notified. And then we can maintain the property ourselves through our DPW, which we can do. Thank you, Councilman. Council President, we'll need a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Schwind, if you could come up to the microphone. Come to the mic. Yeah. Are we talking about 24309? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 24309. Yes. Oh, no, 243. Yeah. 243. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Mm. Second. Oh. Councilman Wait, McLaughlin, Councilman McConnell. He said no. He doesn't want them. You want to talk on that, Bill? Yeah, I want to talk. Oh. Oh, we already closed. We've got to open it back up to the public. <laughs> open it up to the public. It's open. <clears throat> can't hear. I'm sorry I can't hear you. That's probably my fault. No problem, Bill. I don't know what this ordinance is all about. Oh, Swim no. at Beach Street. I don't know what this ordinance is all about. Would somebody please explain to me what this ordinance is? I didn't hear you. Bill, this ordinance short changes our uh, notification process. What we have is a lot of houses that are being foreclosed, and you'll see the grass growing up to here, and we say, well, how come you're not doing anything? It takes us weeks before we can serve them the papers. They have to physically get it in their hand. This ordinance eliminates that problem, where we just put place a sticker on the door, and they're notified. That's it. So once that happens now, we can send our DPW there to cut the grass which they do anyway, but it'll be a lot quicker process. Now, does that also include some people who are a little bit sloppy about their property, where things are growing over on somebody else's property? Well, if, if we and, get it, uh, it's probably maintenance. It. That's maintenance. If we get a call on that, we give it to our maintenance inspector, where he will give them a violation first. Sure. And I guess in, in the event they fail to do it, he will issue a summons like this, where he notifies them. So you have to go to the podium, and so we can make comments can be picked up. I thought they could hear me. One more question. Uh, on this if ordinance. If a person has that problem, their neighbor is a little bit sloppy and it's, things are growing all over the place, what do they do in order to get somebody up there to give that notice out? Do they have to call who? The building, the building. department. Building department. Yeah. Once they call the building department, then the building department takes action and they go up there and they post a notice. Right. They'll Before that, they had to well, send a letter and a lot of other belongings. He just post a notice, but he'll inspect it first, see if it is in violation. And also, if you give it to the mayor's secretary, Pat Burke, she will turn it over to the building department for you. You can call the mayor too, huh? Yes. Good enough. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question about this as well, so for clarification. Name. Name. Estelle Vandello, 36 Franklin Street. Um, if I talk about my my neighbor has several trees on his property. Uh, quite a few of the branches are over on my side of the property. Can I cut them down, whatever is on my side of the property, or can I ask him to cut them down because I don't want to pay for it? That's more of a legal opinion, it's true. Okay. I've, I've heard stories where people are allowed to cut on their side, but you have to check with your lawyer first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, or the building department, or that doesn't... They wouldn't get involved in that kind of... They wouldn't. Anybody in the will get involved with that, besides paying the lawyer to do that? Well, that would be a dispute between neighbors, and the municipality really would not have go to your interest in that. You would have to speak to your own private attorney. Okay. okay. If, if, if I may, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm not... If I may, Councilor, yeah. sure. I'm not a lawyer, Estelle, but uh, uh, I do know that um, I had the same similar situation like you. It's always a nice courtesy to say to your neighbor, would you like to um, do anything about those branches? Otherwise, I will. Uh, I had the same similar situation, um, and I was just mentioning the Council with Lock. I know it's been mentioned here before in the Council. Anything that's over your fence, there's an imaginary, we had a resident over on, uh, was it 18th Street, I believe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an imaginary line, if I'm not mistaken, straight Air up. Rights. Anything that's coming up, what's that, Jack? Air rights. Air rights. You can mm -hmm. trim whatever. Okay. Okay? 
No. Okay. Thank you. She, she should check with her own attorney. Yeah, I think she should. Did we close the uh, public portion? I did. Motion to close it. Any time. Again. Many times. You can close it. We we did close it. Yes. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to adopt, made by Councilman McLaughlin, second by Conboy. All right. We need a roll call, right? Correct. <clears throat> on roll call on resolution. 24309, which is introduction of 09-16 on second reading. Council Member Catamania is absent. Council Members Conboy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trewinski? Yes. Moncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 244-09, introduce 09-17 on second reading. Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to establish outside police contracting service fee schedule. And whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, July 23rd, 2009, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same. Now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to establish outside police contracting service fee schedule pass on final reading. Council President, we need a motion to open to motion the public. Motion to open uh, the meeting to the public. So moved. Second. Councilman McLaughlin and Councilman Vancino. All, uh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Anybody from the, the audience <clears throat> want to speak on this ordinance? <laughs> Anybody want to say anything on it? It's okay. It's $50. They get paid so much for all public outside charge. Right. All right. We're not, they're not being paid by us. Right. Uh, all right. We, can we, we're going to have a motion to close the uh, public. Yep. So moved. Second. Councilman Convoy and Councilman Truwinski. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Discussion. to adopt. Roll call. Well, we, we'll need a, we need a motion to adopt. Council we need a motion to adopt. So moved. I don't think there is discussion. After the motion. Okay. Yeah, after. Okay. Motion was made by McLaughlin, seconded by Convoy. Convoy. Discussion. Anybody? Uh, Yes, this is just so everybody knows in the audience and for a TV. This is uh, an ordinance that we're doing for the out. We don't. This is the outside work that our law enforcement do. Uh, they're not paid by us, by the borough. They're paid by the individuals, the in individual contracting companies that use them uh, you know, for extra services, security, whatever it may be. So this is not something that the borough is paying for. We just help set the, the fee, the fee rates. That's it. Me too. Thank you, Council President. Thanks. We have a motion and a second on roll call. Council members, Catamania is absent. Convoy? Mm. Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Schwinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Council President, we do have a consent agenda tonight. On the consent agenda, we have resolution 245-09, payment of bills. And I would just point out to the members of the governing body that there was a revised bill list sent to you yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'd ask you to supplement the, uh, the initial or the initial bill list that came in your packet on Tuesday with the one that came out yesterday. Um, we also have resolution 24609, confirmation of checks, resolution 24709, confirmation of payroll, resolution 24809, authorized execution of a joint contract of joinder agreement, uh, which is regard to the energy audit, resolution 24909, redeem third party tax lien, habit development LLC. Resolution 25009, redeem third party tax lien Edison tax service. Resolution 25109, refund performance bond Montana Construction Corporation in the amount of $85,000. Resolution 25209, refunds from the recreation account. Resolution 25309, support resolution to deny parole to Christopher Rigahetti. Resolution 25409, authorized resolution designating a bond anticipation note. Resolution 25509, endorsed Bergen County Open Space Trust Fund grant application for the Gilbert Avenue, and I'm sorry, that should be the Gantner Avenue, the Gantner, Gantner Avenue, Holman School Association in the amount of $9,656. Make a motion for the consent agenda. Second. 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 Councilman Bogland, Councilman Conboy. Any discussion? Roll call on the consent agenda. <clears throat> Council Member Catamania is absent. Council Members <clears throat> Castiglia? Yes. Convoy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Chewinski? Yes. Foncino? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor and the uh, Council President, under resolutions this evening, we have resolution 
256-09, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that the following names be and are hereby appointed 2009 part-time employees for the Recreation Department in the Special Events category. Michael Asela, after school program, $10 an hour. After camp, $10 an hour. Spray park, $10 an hour. Game room, $8 an hour. Sean Calderon, after camp, $12 an hour. Spray park, $10 an hour. Anthony Coban, after school program, $10 an hour. After camp program, $10 an hour. Penny Sue Forestieri, game room, $10 an hour. Spray park, $10 an hour. Pamela Longbreaker, who is also a certified teacher, Main gym, $12 an hour. Game room, $10 an hour. Spray park, $10 an hour. Jacqueline Moriarty, who is also a certified teacher. Spray park, $10 an hour. Game room, $8 an hour. Jan Seidel, after camp, $10 an hour. Spray park, $10 an hour. Game room, $8 an hour. And Panola Danny, spray park, $10 an hour. Um, Council President, if I may, before we take a motion on this, just explain that all of these people are already current employees of the Recreation Department. Um, however, there are about five or six categories in which we hire them to do specific jobs down at the rec center. This will allow these people to also be utilized for these specific titles. So there's no additional employees here. It's just being able to use them where there may be um, hourly work that slots need to be filled. Thank you, Council President. Okay. Motion to accept. So, so, moved. so moved. Second. Second. Councilman Vonsino, Councilman Convoy. Mm -hmm. Is this an all in favor or? No, we'll, we'll do a roll call. Okay. On roll call, Council Member Catamania is absent. Council Members Convoy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Chawinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 257 09. Whereas there has arisen a need in the building department for a temporary full time technical assistant during the absence of a technical assistant due to a family medical leave. And whereas Tris Yanucci was appointed on a temporary basis on February 5th, 2009. And whereas the mayor and council wish to extend the appointment of Trish Unucci of Norwood, New Jersey, now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Onwood Park that said remuneration shall be $25 per hour and said appointment shall be extended until September 11th, 2009. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Councilman McLaughlin, Councilman Trewinski. Roll. On roll call, Council Member Catamania is absent. Council Members Convoy. Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trewinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. And Council President, just for the record, this this um, extension date uh, coincides with the date due date of return um, for the full-time employee. Resolution 258-09 be resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Mount Park. The following change order number one and final is hereby approved. Contractor Stacy Contracting of Clifton, New Jersey. Contract number EP1115. Project is Kip Avenue Infrastructure Improvement Section 1. Original contract price is $187,701. Change order and final is a reduction of that original contract price in the amount of $8,564.59. So the adjusted contract amount is $179,136.41. That's a good change order. Yeah. <laughs> Motion? So moved. Second. Fonsino, Trewinski. Call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Member Catamania is absent. Council Members Convoy? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Chewinski? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Council President, tonight we have two applications for raffles. St. Leo's Home and School Association for their annual casino night. St. Leo's Home and School Association for their 50-50 raffle. I make a motion. Second. Council McLaughlin? Council, Councilman Convoy? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I ask a question Nobody on that, opposed? though? No. Nobody opposed? All right. May I just ask a question, if I may, on stuff like that? Uh, maybe after we approve uh, these type of uh, raffles and so forth, is there any onus on the borough to ensure that they follow through <coughs> on their guidelines, that they properly executed their raffles, or is it just that's just the that state, state, you know, state game, gaming and so game. forth? They already have the permission from the state. Right, we're just that's part of their giving state them, Right, okay. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Council yes. President, under reports this evening, we have the monthly reports from the Building Department, the Building Inspector, the Department of Public Works, the Police Department, the Municipal Court, and the Finance Department. Motion to, motion to accept. Receiving file. Second. Second. Convoy. 
Loughlin Convoy. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Committee reports. Hmm. Committee reports. Hi, right, go ahead, Rich. Uh, Councilman Trewinski. On the ordinance committee, um, we have one thing that we've been changing, our major minor subdivision ordinance, where we'll make it a little bit easier on the minor subdivisions. Uh, should be coming soon. Uh, just for the record, though, there's another thing came to my attention. Our ordinance committee is working on it. It's getting our uh, anybody who has a plow on the truck off the streets at a certain time by the summer. We have some uh, trucks some people have been complaining about that have been on the streets parked with snow plows sitting on them. And at the present time, we're going to address that with our borough attorney and see what type of ordinance we can come up on that. Uh, the fire department has received their county ID badges as required by OEM. <coughs> and I understand, I think it's this Saturday, they're going to have a joint uh, function with the boats at the uh, river basin here with a barbecue for all fire departments from the surrounding area. Thank you. Councilman McLaughlin. Progress. <coughs> Councilman Convoy. Okay. Um, okay, and a couple of fronts here. Regarding our recreation department, I first would just like to thank um, all of our summer camp counselors uh, and our rec, uh, our rec director and her staff. I, uh, I continue to get constant uh, thank yous and compliments from a lot, of many of the parents and even the children themselves who attended our summer camp. We've always had a great summer camp. It just, uh, this year they did try some new things, shake it up a little bit and the parents uh, and children seem very happy. So I want to thank all the counselors. I got lots of uh, many thanks uh, from many parents who said they saw counselors being very active. Um, at one of our work meetings, a resident from Pine Street came uh, and mentioned to the council at a work meeting that she was thrilled to see the counselors. When the children left, they were going around the complex picking up any, any wrappers and so forth. The counselors were identified by their uniform. They wore a uniform this year, a green t-shirt with khaki shorts. They all had ID badges. It was a really nice job done. So I want to thank all of those uh, counselors. Uh, some are teachers, but also a lot of them are our uh, college students that live here within the borough and have been members of recreation ever since they were small children. So they're very familiar with everybody. And again, they did a great job, so I want to thank them. Um, our recreation department is continuing upgrading many of its facilities. Uh, at the next rec board meeting in September, they'll be discussing some new weight room equipment and so forth to continue moving forward. Our rec director is working hard now on refurbishing some of the parks that we had gotten the open space money from, looking to spend uh, on that. Again, that was uh, monies that we matched and got back from the county, so those parks will be targeted and we'll get their work done in the fall. Um, so I want to thank everybody there for what they're doing there. Um, Again, on a, a continued home front of the financial, financial side of it as the finance chairman, um, we do, as I mentioned earlier, as we adopted the budget, we do have challenges ahead of us. Uh, the uh, 2010 budget you know, will be difficult, and as we already know, it will not be pretty. Uh, as we continue to do everything we can to get under the cap that is set by the state, we meet those requirements. Uh, we don't jump at all of the little uh, thrills that they try to throw at us, which now some municipalities who did are finding out how difficult it is to live. For example, the pension carrot they try to throw our way. Paramus is dealing with that right now, uh, and we will have to address that as we move forward. We as a borough, as you may have heard the mayor, remember the mayor mentioned this at our last public meeting, we are currently waiting, I think uh, bids are due in September, Mr. Clerk, regarding our trash. We're looking to do shared services with two other municipalities to try to bring down our cost of trash removal. Hopefully that will be something else that we can uh, benefit from. Um, and uh, also just like to uh, just get back a little bit on what Councilman Chawinski said earlier. Um, we did kind of gang tackle Congressman Hoffman as he left here on the 10th. Uh, I think he thought maybe we were the bodyguards outside. <laughs> but uh, we did get a few minutes, myself, Councilman Chawinski, um, Councilman uh, Castiglia, Council Candidate Keith Work was outside with us as we tried to, uh, and the mayor, try to get a hold of, of Congressman Rothman. He did ask us to uh, put together with the council a list of some things that he can do for us and get it to him by October. So we'll discuss that in the October, uh, prior to that in our next work meeting. Uh, hopefully he can you know, do something for us as we expressed to him, myself and Councilman uh, Chawinski and Councilman President Larry, uh, that you know, it's, uh, 
it's just, again, uh, I hate to keep down like a broken record. It's just unfair. And he agreed with us. Yeah. And he, he said he knew, he understands that Elmwood Park continues to be, you know, good, diligent counsel uh, yeah. and uh, see what he can do for us. I, uh, if you guys are wondering where the mayor is, he is out on Zeppeli training in Aruba. <laughs> So when he gets back, don't forget the St. Leo's Carnival. He'll be handing out Zeppelis, and we'll be cooking those up. So don't forget the carnival is coming up. Hopefully he's doing his, you know, he's studying out there. <laughs> um, also, just to remind everybody, when you catch this one, by then school will probably be in session. Be careful. Watch the driving out there. And everybody have a great uh, Labor Day weekend, and thank you. Congratulations, Council President uh, Castiglia. Thank you. So far, job well. Councilman Trewinski, you need another minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, on that uh, joint project that's going to happen on the uh, river with the fire departments, I made a mistake. That's next weekend, not this weekend. Okay, thank you. Councilman Vonsino. Okay, uh, relative to committees, uh, just building the grounds, I have a report. Uh, our Department of Public Works uh, Superintendent, uh, Scott Kars, has been busy in the summer uh, working through uh, vacations and, and being short staffed because of vacations and has been addressing a number of issues at the municipal building and the rec center in terms of maintenance, electrical maintenance, property maintenance. In addition, he's taken on about 12 homes in foreclosure yeah. and property maintenance on those homes. So he had a pretty full plate over the summer months. Um, he's working to get estimates on the brickwork and the steps in the back of the municipal building, so hopefully we'll move out on that. Uh, in the coming months and uh, once we get into the uh, four months we'll get back to the planning on the municipal building re uh, reconfiguration we're going to do some office moves that we're planning kind of put that on the back burner so hopefully we'll get back to that in September and uh, just a note uh, regarding on the consent agenda there was resolution 24809 and uh, with that resolution we joined a New Jersey sustainable energy meeting which is a meeting of municipalities in the state of New Jersey. And being a member of that committee, we'll be able to collectively pool our, our energy purchases or look at our energy consumption as a total. And hopefully that'll enable us to buy energy, gas and electric at a reduced rate. And um, if we do that, we may be able to realize savings on energy purchases on the order of twenty-five to $50,000, depending on on the negotiated price of the energy. So that'll be a real savings that hopefully we can move forward in 2010. With. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, I just have a few things. Uh, I'm the liaison to the DPW. I've been for a year and a half now since I was elected to council. I just wanted to mention that a lot of times the DPW gets some bad rest, but these guys work pretty hard down there. I've, I've, I've been in contact with them often. Uh, they're in a situation right now where they lost at least three employees in the last year, and they haven't been replaced because of the, the economic situation that we're in right now. So uh, any complaints or concerns that we're getting from residents, I'm calling Scott Cars down there, and he's, uh, he's getting somebody on it as quickly as possible. And, and we have had some compliments from residents. They've even come in here and stood up at the microphone and mentioned how nice it was working with the DPW. So give these guys a little bit of credit when you see them out there. They are working hard. They're not you know, fluffing off somewhere like a lot of people might think. I also wanted to mention, uh, I received a letter here, and I think the mayor got one. It's from uh, Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Wasco over on Elmwood Drive. They had a situation, well, they had construction going on over at their house, and one of our code officials went over from the building department to work, to work with them. Uh, they have nothing but compliments. They said he went way out of his way to help them. Uh, I, I guess I could mention his name. It's Charlie. I can't. I can't pronounce his last name. Canaradio. Can, 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 can he's one of our code our code officials. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing but compliments for him. They said he went out of his way to help them out to get them through this construction, and they even went as far as to write a letter. So this is the kind of things we like to hear. Between the compliments we've been getting for the DPW and this for the building department, that's. I like to see how people are out there doing something to please to please the residents, and I'm glad to see that the residents think enough of it to, to send us a letter. Uh, and that's about it. One other thing. I started this regiment after dinner walking down the boulevard. I visit, I visit the, the ball field. I visit Keats sometimes down at the ball field. I take a walk. I go for a couple of miles every night. Uh, the boulevard is a place where people like to walk. They're out there walking. They're out there jogging. As everybody probably knows, the mayor's been working on it. Richie's been working on it. We've all been working on, on that county park. Now, 
it's still up to the county, but if we do wind up accepting that property, it's going to have to be where we can get the money from another source to, to, to clean it up and to maintain it for a while. That's what we're trying to do. We don't want to take it out of borrowed taxes. So that's why it's still up in the air right now as to where we're going with it. But as I do walk down the boulevard, I think uh, what a nice thing it would be is, is to have a walking path that does cut through that property and come back out onto the boulevard again. That's just something I wanted to mention. I want to let you know that it's still in the works. We're still trying to get something going there. And that's just about it. That's it for me. Uh, if there's anybody from the audience that wants to go up and say something, this is the time. Uh, we got to open it up to the public. Open the meeting up to the public. You need a motion? So moved. Second. You got that, Vonsino and Convoy. Anybody want to come up and say something? Name and address? <laughs> I know. For we years, I've, for years, I've never okay. said anything. Now, right. uh, Estelle Vendello, 36 Franklin Street. And in the spirit of full disclosure, I am here on behalf of my aunt, who's uncomfortable talking in front of the microphone. Okay. So I'm speaking for her. Like um, she is uh, Connie Brasigliano, B-R-A-C-I-G-L-I-A-N-O, 66 Main Avenue. She is vice president of the Golden Age Club meeting at the Senior Center on the boulevard and she and other members are becoming very concerned about the director of the rec center that they feel as if they are being harassed by her and I'm, un I'm disappointed the mayor is not here I didn't know he wasn't going to be here because we did want to speak with him and we're willing to do that again when he's here or meet with him privately but we did want to get this out in the open um, one of the things that the director did was she demanded that they open the locker that was being used by the Golden Age people. She had the contents removed and she had the locks changed. Uh, she did that without talking or mentioning it to any of the officers and I don't think she mentioned it to the members. She might have mentioned it to someone else but not to them. Uh, th the second thing that they want, she wanted me to bring up was that when they, uh, they take a monthly bus trip to Atlantic City. And when they go, they park in the large parking lot. That's why I had the question. Right. She was yelling at them and said that they can no longer, that they should not be parking on that side. She didn't mention, as far as I know, the, those restricted spots for employees, just that they should not be over there at all, that they should park by the senior center side. However, if they do that, just so that you know, those are limited spots. If they do that and their cars are there all day, other seniors who want to use the senior center will have no place to park. Uh, the third thing is uh, she told them that this was her building and she can do anything she wants. And they're really getting the feeling that uh, they're at some point going to be harassed to the point where they're going to have to leave or they're going to be asked to leave. And that side of the building is clearly marked senior center. So they have become very concerned about it and wanted to bring it up to the mayor and council. Anything else you want? No. I believe this is the first we're hearing about this, so we, we, oh. will, we will look into it. What is it? No, talk about it. Oh. I'm Adeline O'Lear, 123 Falmouth Avenue. I've been with the club 21 years. and. 21 years ago, Mayor Mola approached the Golden Age and said, why are you paying rent? At the VFW, when you were given this building, it was built for you. Now, this woman has repeatedly said, this is my building and I will do what I want. That other closet is needed. We have a party every month, either in the center or out, and we use it for supplies. We had to take them out and put it in Chris's office, the director, that looks like a warehouse. We buy cases of soda. We have no room in the one closet because we have the coffee urns. We have the sugar, the milk, stacks of coffee and tea. We have no room there for these other supplies. Now, whose building is this? Is it ours? And if so, she should give us back our closet. She tried to take the ceramics closet, too. Where are they supposed to put their supplies? They meet in that room every Tuesday. I don't understand. We had no trouble with Richard for 21 years. The ceramics people are seniors? Yes. 
Yes. Yes, it's a ceramics class. They're all seniors in there. All our classes. We, and we watch a movie there every Friday. But this woman has given us a lot of headaches. Uh, this is the uh, I'm, I'm liaison. Ladies, I'm liaison to the uh, Board of Recreation. When the meeting is over, give me both your phone numbers. I will call you tomorrow. The trip that you, the tri let's, the, regarding the parking lot, the trip that they, that they go on, is that the uh, trip that's run by Jean? Yes. The monthly? Okay. Yes. Um, I understand that we have to have permission for anything we do, and we'll go according to the rules we always did. That's fine. But when she runs out, tells us, we're getting on the bus, and she's saying, you can't park here, you can't park here. Right. Um, this was brought up a few months back. Yes, and it was cleared up because right, they, right. Yeah, they brought in a big box of donuts. We have to make, they make, uh, well, reservations at the beginning of the year. She didn't know that? We reserve the law every second Wednesday of the month for the entire year. They only go in once and get the permission. Right. Th what I was going to say, ma'am, it's that's all. You guys can park there all you like. That's I don't know what prompted this occurrence. I will I will call her when the meeting is over. I mean, I, you know, I, you know. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll Lots of times the other side is packed and we have no place I to park. I understand. We got to go on that side. I, you're more than welcome to park there. All right, I want I, my closet this, back. This was fixed. <laughs> I thought, to my honest, to, to my, to my, to my knowledge, that was correct, uh, corrected, and that you guys can, you know, park there. Um, I think there was supposed to be a designated area. That way, your cars don't get touched during the day because you do arrive back late after the recreation building is closed. Um, but uh, I will look into that right away. As far as the closets are concerned, yes. Why does she run our closets? Well, wait, wait, Tom. Uh, she was taking the ceramic closet too, but they, on this, Keith, through they objected. Part two at the Legion. Through you, Mr. Council President, okay. uh, this is side. in what fact the first time that I'm. I don't know. That's what I said. I don't know why she's on our side. If that, if it's our senior center, then that room belongs to us. Take her stuff out. Ma'am, if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to make a few comments. Uh, okay, one, one more second. Another thing that really brought this to a head is that I believe in September they're going to be gone for a week because they're going Cape Cod. to Cape Cod for a week. And they're going to be parked over on the other side, and they're concerned that at the last minute they're not going to be able to be parked there. She's already said they can't park there. That's but we, Tom, we can talk after. Through you, Council President, um, yes. this is in fact the first time that this is being brought to my attention. First time for um, And I would like to welcome um, anybody who has a concern such as this. You're certainly free and welcome to come to a council meeting um, and present it to the entire governing body. But I'm here every day, five days, sometimes six or seven days a week. And my door is always open to every resident to try to resolve situations like this in the event that someone would not want to come to a public meeting. Estelle, like your, like your aunt, who was tentative about speaking in, at the microphone tonight. Um, you know, I'd be glad to address this with individual department heads. That's why I get paid uh, to be here every day, in addition to, to running the daily operation of the municipality. Um, so I'll work with Councilman Conboy um, tonight after the meeting and tomorrow morning to, to discuss the, the pending issues um, with the recreation director. I will also say this, that when there's an extended trip, and, and Councilman McLaughlin can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it used to be Wildwood. Um, you know, we used to allow parking here in the municipal lot um, behind the municipal building to accommodate the seniors who were going on the trip. And then any spillover parking we can accommodate in the uh, little triangle across the street that we lease from the Department of Transportation with the state of New Jersey. So if you'd like, I'll be glad to give you my card before I leave tonight and so that I can get in touch with you tomorrow and you can call me and we can work out whatever we need to make sure that there's adequate parking for all the seniors who are attending the trip. Okay. We, if it's okay, we'll talk after the meeting, um, and, and I'll be glad to share you with you my phone number here at the office, and we'll try to resolve this amicably. Thank you, Council President. Anyone else? Mr. Schwind. You're going to go easy on us, right? You can't, you can't hear. Bill Schwind, Beach Street. Last year, our rec director...
We're closer to my bill. As a consequence, the council had to go out and get resumes, which they did. I have to assume that the council looked over those resumes very carefully and they chose someone. Now that particular person was appointed, but he wasn't on the job very long. He was only there a month, I believe, and he resigned. Now why he resigned, I don't care, but he resigned. So therefore the council had to go back again, look over some more resumes, and they came up with uh, Donna Pugliese, who is our present recreation director. Uh, she was appointed to the job, and I presume this is the council that, well, not you, sir, but there was somebody sitting over here. I presume this is the council that appointed her unanimously. Am I correct? That's yes, correct. Yes, Nobody objected. Along, when she first got hired, she was hired, appointed by all of us. Uh, everyone that's here, uh, except okay. for Councilman Monsino, at the time, I, I, Councilwoman. I, 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 we discuss it first and now. Well, well, so far what we're saying is somebody got hired, yeah. but okay. you know, they, that, right. as that's a, fine. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Mr. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get into yeah, discussion. I'm not let, done let, here yet. Let no, me discuss it. Let, let me, let me answer I asked a question, you answered it. Let me go on. I, I want to know where he's going with it. Well, let me just first add, uh, let's first answer his first she, question. It's not a question. She hasn't been notified that you know, we're no, going to be No, she hasn't been notified that we're going to be discussing Right, we're not, that we're going to be He's asking if she was hired, though. Yeah, not I want I to understand, answer that. but I, I think that this should be discussed not here. It should be discussed in a private session. She, she has her priced. rights, sure. Are you going to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Well, I mentioned the name already. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, what the, I don't know what the point of it. I don't know what the point of it. Well, you know, at this point, at this point, Mr. Schwinn, I'm going to answer you because I, I always keep it here in my notebook because it's August. It's... Uh, that time of the year, the silly season's around the corner. Um, the individual you're speaking about was hired by the unanimous council. At the time, the vote was just Catamanga, yes. Castiglia, yes. Convoy, yes. McLaughlin, yes. Councilwoman Pellegrin was here, yes. And Councilman Chewinski, yes. Okay, let me go on from there. I don't know what you were saying, but it had something to do with some legal thing I'm going to say. <clears throat> Might very well be. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Now, last year's campaign, somebody said she wasn't qualified. The campaign was based on not being qualified. Now, the campaign, the campaign came, the campaign went, and it died down. Didn't hear anything more about it. Now, I'm hearing a lot of good reports from this woman, what she's doing over there. These people here probably have a good point, and I think it's going to be straightened out, but we're hearing a lot of good things. But there's a little something going on in the boombacks out here that this whole thing is coming up again. She's not qualified. Now, I would like to know this. Is she qualified or isn't she? Can somebody answer that question? I mean, let's get it on the board. Let's find out whether she's qualified and she is. I really don't feel comfortable about discussing That's right. a borough employee without her being notified That's that we're right. going to discuss her. Well, okay. All right. It's, it's not, you know, it's just but like it's, a good job. It's being said that she's not qualified. I'd like to know if she is or if she is. Mr. Schwinn, may I ask you a question? Where did you hear that? What was the question? Where, where did you hear that? Where, who told you that? Oh, come on, will you? I'm not going to name names. I heard it, okay? I heard it by a number of people. Okay. That's all. I'm not going to name any names. Why Bill, should I? Bill, if I may, were you over at the break center during the summer? You see how many kids are there? Yeah. It's a very small area. Parking lot. Everything is smaller than we'd like to have. And uh, she's doing the best with what she has. I understand the problem they had with the uh, Golden Age group. I was there when they were doing it. And uh, I understand her problem. I understand the members' problems. But uh, this program has grown tremendously. We have something like, like over 400 children in and out of there during the summer, between the spray grounds and uh, the summer camps and everything else on that very, very small piece of property. 
the seniors only have about 22 parking spaces on the nutrition side. So they're in a, uh, a bind. <clears throat> but we had worked it out before, and uh, our voter clerk can attest to this. During the course of a time when they are going away, we can park here at the municipal lot at the far end along that fence. And you know, you can carpool to minimize the number of cars. If you can come out with 10 cars, probably, I'm sure you wouldn't have more than 10 cars. We can more than fit them there. We have police protection right there to watch the cars and uh, park there and eliminate the whole problem at the lot. You're actually better off there than you are at the municipal, at the uh, recreation mm -hmm. center. And we can arrange that for that again, I'm sure. We did it before. We'll do it again. But I, I don't feel comfortable uh, talking about the person. It's not right. And uh, there is a legal problem. Well, okay, I'm asking you a question. If you fellows don't want to answer it, that's okay with me. I'll sit down. But I think that's a terrible cloud that's hanging over this woman's head. That again, she should be accused of not having the proper credentials to be that particular person. I and have this council, and this council turned around and unanimously put her in there. Well, you know, Mr. Schwinn, if I can add to it, you... I have no more things to say. I, I, I don't want to get in any trouble here, but I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, anxious to find I, out what's going I'm on. I'm sure you are. I appreciate you asking, because it was about this same time last year, if you remember. You were here at that public meeting. Sure. The mayor wasn't here. A lot of folks came up, discussed uh, what she, who she is, and so forth and so forth. Um, and uh, you yourself, I give you a lot of credit. What did you do? As a... a you left here, you made an appointment, and you went and spoke with her yourself. And you Absolutely. Her. She toured you around the place. A lot of the things they said Fine. that she did wasn't true uh, of those things last August. Um, I will tell well, you. I got her low down on what was going on. That's all I did. No, and I, I had a right to do that. I, I felt I like you, I was responsible to do that. I know you yeah. came back here to the council and shared your meeting with us at a public meeting. So I applaud you for making. The attempt, as you said, last August, you hadn't had an opportunity to meet her. You went and you found out for yourself, and you saw some of the things that she was putting into place. I will tell you, I, I, I can, I'm going to say this, uh, when her reappointment came up, this council discussed this. Uh, mm -hmm. She was reappointed by all of us here, uh, everybody that is here, except, except for Councilman Catamanga, who was absent at that public meeting. Um, I believe he had to pick up family members at the airport, but wasn't here that night. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we, when in, in discussion, we discussed in work meeting to reappoint her. And to my recall, I don't remember any objections. So she was reappointed. Thank you. Uh, it's Del Vendello, 36 Franklin Street. Just for clarification, the members of the Golden Age Club are not, did not say anything about her not being qualified. You're exactly right. I was going to bring that up. I, no, I, no, didn't, no, hear no, it, no, I no. didn't hear it mentioned at all. No, no, I know. I just wanted to make the point. I don't know what, I don't know the woman. I don't know whether she's qualified or not qualified. You all hired her. Right. Their concern is how they're being Plus, treated. Yeah. Has nothing to do with her qualifications. Just wanted to make it clear. Okay. okay. Anybody else uh, from the public? Okay, I guess uh, we need a motion to close the public session. Yes. Councilman Vonsino, Councilman Trewinski on the second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? <coughs> no. Okay, that's it. Motion to adjourn? Yeah, motion to adjourn. So moved, Vonsino, second. Uh, somebody second. Councilman Trewinski, second. All in favor? All in favor to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Nobody opposed. Well, you just used enough for 20 years.